You're listening to 50 Pirates in 50 Days on the Sports Objective Podcast. A new era of East Carolina football is here and will begin on August 31st when Mike Houston leads the Pirates into action at NC State. Between now and then, join us for a daily trip down memory lane as we experience Pirate football through the words of the men who made those memorable moments happen. Here's your host, Bubba Rosenbaum. So I think we're making history on this podcast, and you wonder why, Bubba, this is the first time that we've had a guest named Bubba, right? Yeah, two Bubbas are better than one for sure, uh, and now we're very excited to have with us from the mid-80s and the Art Baker and Ed Emery eras, Bubba Waters. Bubba, welcome into the show. Glad to be able to join you guys. Well, I love, uh, that's when I became a pirate, and uh, when I became a pirate fan is uh, during one of your years in 1986. I was a teenager coming over there for the FCA uh, days of, uh, the FCA day under Art Baker, and um, I wanted to first find out, I know that Coach Emery is, uh, I take it as, who um, recruited you, that staff. Can you talk about how you became a pirate? Yeah, it was um, Coach Emery, um, uh, initiated and uh, Coach Matosh was the actual recruitment coach. Um, uh, showed the interest, and I was playing running back, of course, from, from Bath. And so, um, doing that process, I just there were other schools that were interested, but there was something about East Carolina and um, Coach Henry and Coach Matosh and the, the whole coaching staff, and, and even just the East Carolina uh, culture and the uh, just to feel of Greenville. <laughs> um, it was kind of hard to uh, to go anywhere after after visiting, and then also being only a you know only about thirty or forty minutes from the university. So, uh, and it was an excitement coming in. Uh, they had just had a a, a a good year prior to I think in eighty two, and I was coming out in eighty three. So it was a lot of. Um, it was a lot of excitement around Greenville and the whole um, the eastern part of the state. So, <laughs> yeah, it really was. And the '83 team, of course, eight and three, and then only 13 points from being undefeated and close losses down at teams all ranked in the top five at the times of the game um, with, with Florida State, Florida, and uh, eventual national champion Miami. So, uh, excitement was uh, probably at an all-time high for sure, and. Uh, you take a look at the schedules that you guys played in that day, or those days, I should say, Bubba, and uh, it's just remarkable. Um, playing 85, you had at Penn State, you had Miami and Greenville, South Carolina and Greenville. You also had road trips to NC State, Auburn, and LSU, and uh, I could continue on over the next um, two or three seasons. <laughs> so just talk a little bit about what it was like to play at some of college football's best venues. Wow, you speaking about excitement, I'm just being exposed. And again, I was from one A school, Bath, and and uh, just to uh, be able to play against those teams and the, the athletes that we played against. Uh, um, we played against some of the, the, the best in the, in college football and all Americans here, left and right. We played against all Americans, and which was it was a big deal for for not only me but my teammates. Um, and for the coaches and just in preparation and and the work we had to put in, not only facing those guys, but uh, the other teams that we faced also. But just the competitiveness with, that was one of our team um, in the 80s um, that that uh, we knew if we didn't prepare appropriately, then we didn't stand a chance. So it was an uphill battle the whole time. But again, just the excitement of playing those big name schools and the big name athletes. And at some point, I mean, we we fought uh, uh, to the best of our ability to try to hang in with those guys. But uh, it was a challenge, not only for us, but for the other teams that they played also. Because we did play against the heavily ranked teams. And, and again, that was the excitement and enjoyment part of it. We uh, did come out on the on the, uh, the bright side of those battles most of the time, but. Uh, in '83 we did, but following there, that was a you know it was um it was tough times. But again, we got up for every game because of the competition we were playing and and uh, the exposure that was involved in that. So 
I wouldn't trade for anything in the world. I mean, we often have said some of the guys that were on the team we, after those years, we said so we got we played against the best, but we we got we got beat by the best, but we played against the best also. And so that's something that we would uh, cherish and, and, and wouldn't trade it and be able to, uh, as we're speaking today, to be able to tell other people about what that was like. Um, a lot of teams have won, but they didn't go through the teams that we had to go through and the, and the individual athletes um, that we had to go through. Bob, we'll talk a little bit about um, some of um, the position or your specific position battles during those years and some of some of the guys that you were playing with. Okay. Well, I, again, I came in as a running back. Um, I was blessed enough to lead the state in, in Russia in my, in my senior year. Um, had multiple play, had multiple um, um, uh, um, East West Soft Stars that came in also with me. I think we have probably about eleven or twelve East West Soft Stars that joined uh, joined me um, on that um, eighty three recruiting class. Um, well, you know, Anthony Simpson, um, uh, Ellis Dillahunt, um, <clears throat> Vincent Smith, uh, just to name a few, Gary London, Daryl Speed, Ron Jones, um, all uh, great um, athletes. And <laughs> and once we got here, which was something I wasn't really, uh, uh, didn't really understand about the quad athletes that were already here after uh, <laughs> we got here. So it's not only what I, I, I think was a great recruiting class of the class of uh, 83, but the, we, we got here and uh, we were able to see the talent that was already here. Um, and with that being said, I, eventually I did, I, I played multiple positions um, and I playing a little bit of tight end, uh, tailback, fullback, tight end, uh, and then moved to the other side of the ball, um, uh, that spring or the following fall, and um, eventually settled at inside linebacker. Well, I was fortunate enough to, to, to start for three years, um, undersized, uh, but I enjoyed the position, and and it was different playing than playing running back, which I always play. Of course, I played defense in high school also, but a bit bit different uh, talent level. Um, so I. I mean, I remember Coach Emory always said, "I didn't just say recruit you to play." Uh, Running back, I recruited to play football. So, with that being said, I already was prepared to do whatever the, the coach and the team needed me to do to try to uh, help us win. Uh, along with Coach Jim Rand, um, Art Becker, uh, and you know, after Coach Jim, you know. So, with that move, I took it all in stride, and the team, um, we all worked together and tried to. Put forth the you know the best uh, unit that we could put out there <laughs> against the competition that we were playing, which again was a, a pretty tough competition. So. And Bob, I wanted to ask you uh, with the, you were talking about the, going from Coach Emery to Coach Baker. Can you talk? Can you talk about the coaching change? Um, yeah, um, that was uh, you know. Coach Jimmy was a a, a a great man. He his character was the uh, second to none. And once you know, at the end of his era, um, however that went down, um, you know, a great a lot, a lot of players were opposed to the change. Um, but we often know that change is going to come whether we like it or not. So we did go through that process. And with we were familiar with um, excuse me, with um, Coach Baker also. Um, he was our coordinator um, at one point on the Coach Emery. So we, and knowing that Coach Emery was a uh, let go, wasn't coming back, we so knew that Coach Baker would be the coach, uh, and so that 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 helped with the transition. Um, and knowing that you know some of our position coaches uh, uh, were going to still be around, and so we didn't have a. a it was a, 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 a significant change, but not as uh, significant as it could have been if it wasn't still some familiar, familiarity with um, familiarity with um, the coaches. And so, anyway, we just uh, as a team and as a unit, um, we just decided that we had to keep going, no matter who the coach is um, and how we felt about it. Um, because, as you know, the competition, we were still going to be playing the big-time schools. And, and so even though we didn't specifically want Coach Emory to leave, 
um, because what he meant to us. Um, we uh, knew that was part of it and that uh, we had to uh, roll with the punches. Those two seasons you spent uh, under Coach Emery, um, obviously just a tremendous personality and uh, some very entertaining one-liners and stuff. We've we've had um, so, some of those 83 teammates of yours on uh, with our 83 roundtable, and they told us some unbelievable stories about Coach Emery. Uh, do you have one or two that you can share? Well, I do. Hopefully, it was the NCAA would <laughs> hold <laughs> against us. <laughs> but one specifically, I, I, I um, initial contact when I first got on, on campus for uh, the summer, summer, um, summer camp. Um, I came uh, uh, without a pillow, and I, uh, I distinctly remember that he um, asking his wife to go get me a pillow. Um, I don't know where she got it from, and 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 you know, but just that that thought of it, uh, thinking back, that's not, it may be as small as that, but that was my uh, initial contact upon getting getting to um, camp. That you know, that was um, he had uh, uh, that that caring uh, uh, attitude about uh, us as uh, individuals as well as, as players. Um, so that was n- number one, and just number two that. He uh, he would work you, um, <laughs> and he expected his coaches to uh, follow through with his wishes as far as working, working us and making sure that we didn't we wouldn't get outworked. Um, we may not win every game, but we wouldn't get outworked. Uh, that's one of the other things that really stood out about uh, Coach Emory and, and that that team during during that era, especially the Coach Emory area, especially, um, and that. Um, some of those, those one-liners, God, there were so many of them. <laughs> I mean, I mean that was the, the training the training table talk, uh, and we had some good characters on the team that could really sound like Coach Emory. You know, <laughs> talk about those those one-liners and make the heat your friend and this and that and but Coach Emory, uh, and during his recruitment time of me. Uh, I was thinking of him saying um, there was talk about me coming from a a, a small school, um, but he, I remember him saying that if a if a girl's a pretty in bath, she's pretty in Greenville too. I guess it meant to me that if you can run in bath, you can run the football in, in Greenville. Oh, I did change the linebacker, but still, just his his mindset and his his uh, way of being able to express that to me and whomever else like, that question it or whatever. So. <laughs> oh, no doubt about it. It's, uh, so, um, in addition to your memories on the field, um, do you have other memories of of your time in Greenville that you can that you can share with our audience? Um, well, I can start with the the, the, the team, um, the years that were here when we were, uh, I think, a unique group, especially the. Um, the 83 class uh, and the togetherness and the camaraderie we shared. Um, so, and with that being said, we also would, um, of course, not uh, interact on the field, but you know, after hours, whether it be um, uh, downtown back in the day or, or just on campus doing non-football activities together. And and today, um, we still have those um, close relationships, not only with my um, a three class members, but some that some guys are um, um, a few years younger than we were. We still play together, but and I think some of the guys now, uh, uh, as we see each other doing um, whether it be a spring game or, or wherever else, they see the camaraderie that we still maintain after thirty years. Um, and those things, you know, you can't. Uh, I mean, you just can't uh, minimize those things. So just just really the brotherhood that we were exposed to and, and maintained throughout the years. Um uh, and the time we've had here in in, in, in Greenville um uh, some years after football and definitely during football. Um wouldn't trade it uh for the world. Um uh, and just exposure to some of the uh, my coaches and one stand out particularly to me was um <clears throat> my linebacker coach, uh coach Les Herring came from um Clemson. Um but just the, the impact that he made on me as a 
as a football player and a, as a, a person, um, not being a, let, allow your dog get on the field in the classroom and uh, uh, just out in the community. Um, if you're going to um, be on the team, then you have to uh, represent the team in a positive manner wherever you are, you know, those type things. And, you know, as a young man, that, that was very and, and, uh uh, made a, a, a great impact on me and our other team also. So a lot of discipline was was learned throughout my period here at uh, East Carolina, and that started with the uh, uh, coaches and the coaching staff. <laughs> oh, no doubt about it. Um, talk. Speaking of coaching staffs, you obviously have a new head football coach, Mike Houston, coming in, getting ready. Hit, getting ready. Excuse me for his first season with the Pirates. And that's one of the things that uh, we've talked about a lot on this podcast is the tremendous job that Coach Houston and staff are doing reaching out to former players like yourself. So talk a little bit about your thoughts uh, with the coaching change and uh, where you see Pirate football headed under Coach Houston and staff. Well, I hadn't had the opportunity to meet, co- meet the coach yet. Um, I've heard a lot of things about him, as, you know, as a lot of people here in the, in the, in the community have. Um, but everything that I've heard and read, it seems to be positive. And, I, you know, we've had a rough time here. And uh, not only in Greenville, Pitt County, and Eastern Carolina, and North Carolina, with, you know, with the, those down years. So with that being said, uh, you know, I'm in the community every day, and I can see I know what type of impact a, a, a good product on the football field makes for this, this community and the eastern part of the state and, and North Carolina in general. So, Again, expectations are that we can um, improve and get the the buzz around Greenville uh, back. Uh, that I think we all know is needed within this community. Um, but if he can have the success that uh, he had at his previous school and above and beyond that, and then I think the Greenville and, and uh, Eastern Carolina is going to be a, a very proud. And get the athletes, quality of athletes here that are able to not only compete but to uh, get those uh, those conference titles and and get some bowl wins, so we can uh, get this thing turned around. Well, Bubba, thank you so much for your time and making history today. The first guest named Bubba, and uh, <laughs> we uh, appreciate you very much. Thank you for all the hard work you did, uh, obviously uh, with uh, with the Pirates, and uh, look forward to having you back on again sometime soon. All right. I thank, thank you guys. Thanks for your time. That concludes this edition of 50 Pirates in 50 Days on the Sports Objective. Remember, join us daily between now and game day as we'll talk pirate football with players from various eras. All these interviews are available exclusively on SoundCloud and our YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe and follow so you're alerted when we post new content. Thank you so much for listening, and as always, Go Pirates!